Hello everyone. Now that we've talked about both Lattice and ggplot2, I would like... No, now that we've talked more about... Now that we have talked about base R plotting and Lattice, I'd like to talk about ggplot2. So, ggplot2 is an R plotting library that is quite popular. It's probably one of the reasons why people want to learn R, uh, because they want to be able to use this library, because... One thing about that's nice about ggplot2 is that it allows you to create uh, these powerful and complicated but good static plots in a pretty easy to under in a pretty expressive format. Uh, so this this package I would say is a software implementation of ideas presented in a book called uh, the Grammar of Graphics. So the Grammar of Graphics is a book by a guy named Lillian Wilkinson, and it present it suggests the idea that there is a grammar for creating graphics, and uh, you can like create graphics in... I'm thinking that this is more of a software book, uh, but you can do things like add geometries. It, he classifies different... Uh, graphical parameters and so on uh, to allow for creation of complicated graphics and supposedly this grammar can uh, capture all graphics that you could possibly create so this book formed the foundation and is the uh, the philosophical guide for uh, the uh, and design guide for the package ggplot2 uh, by the way, there isn't a published package called ggplot in R. Uh, the author of the package is a guy by the name of Hadley Wickham. He's a very famous R developer. Uh, almost deserves no intro introduction in uh, the R community. And uh, he did make a package called ggplot, but it wasn't. he never published it. And then made the package ggplot2, giving it the number 2 in honor of the original ggplot, and published that, and it's been a wild success. And there is, in fact, a book by Hadley Wickham, uh, that is devoted exclusively to ggplot2. The book is called ggplot2. Uh, it's actually, unfortunately, somewhat dated. Uh, that said, I still recommend reading ggplot2, uh, the book, because you do get a sense of the mindset of ggplot2 and why things are the way they are in ggplot2. And understanding why ggplot2 does what it does and why things are the way they are helps you make good graphics with ggplot2. Uh, to, like, honestly, it, it, once you understand the philosophy behind ggplot2, it makes it very easy to create, create graphics. Very, very easy to create complex and expressive graphics. Uh, the unfortunate thing about ggplot2 is that Lattice and Base R, it really does seem like you're using R as we've used it elsewhere to create to create graphics. So it's it's idioms. So the idioms of Lattice and, and Base R are the same idioms being used elsewhere that you've used up to this point. ggplot2, unfortunately, kind of requires that you learn an additional language on top of R in order to be able to use it well because ggplot2 comes with its own grammar. So you need to learn that grammar in order to create graphics with it. That said, it is genuinely worth learning. Uh, now, one thing about ggplot2 that kind of helps with this problem is that it actually comes with two functions, G, uh, qplot and ggplot. And you can start with qplot, uh, which is like the q is supposed to mean quick, uh, you can start with qplot because qplot is supposed to resemble the plot function that we just saw uh, in the base r plotting video. Whereas the ggplot function is the more general and more advanced function. And honestly, I don't remember the last time I've ever used qplot myself. But qplot is probably still a good starting point. Now, I'm not really even sure I have ggplot2 installed because, well... R 4.0. It is a thing. So, uh, I'm just going to make sure that I have it. Uh, so, anyway. Um, right, so we're going to cover both of these functions, qplot and ggplot, 
and I'm going to try to give you a sense of how the ggplot grammar is working. And once you and again, I I really hope that you if you're if you're interested in this, you can dig in more into the grammar because you can make really good looking graphics in addition for this to this package uh being rather powerful and flexible the graphics made by it often look really good like for example this is one of the first reports that i ever did uh on utah's uh, gender gap and all of the graphics in this report were made using ggplot2 so we've got and and uh yeah they're they're all over the place they look very nice and i am using ggplot to this day to make graphics that are that look good and uh, are and, and uh, are nice, so and expressive. So it, it's very much industrial strength in a sense. Um, uh, the the package. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so the the first function I want to talk about is a function called qplot. So qplot takes uh, two arguments um, and uh, <coughs> so the first two arguments you can pass to qplot are the data that you wish to plot. qplot is supposed to resemble the plot function. So it allows for uh, uh, two variables. So this is how you would create a scatter plot using qplot. All right, there's the scatter plot. Uh, so let's suppose that uh, we want to have uh, the uh, col uh, we want to change the color of the points and the shape of the points based on the species. If we want to do that, we can set the color argument rather than call. So it's it, it's already it's already got an advantage over the base R function because the arguments actually have names that make sense. Like the PCH argument, like I know what it means. It means point character, but that's also just rough to explain. In this case, I want to change the shape of the points, so set the shape parameter, and that makes sense. So this is the um, this is the uh, the resulting plot when we add in color and shape information to to the species, and it automatically creates a legend for us. What a concept, <laughs> right? It automatically creates the legend. We don't have to manually create this legend and the things that are in this legend. So that's really nice. And for what it's worth. Sometimes people don't want legends. Some, like for example, in some of the papers that I've written, my advisor said, "Don't put a legend in there. Uh, if like describe in the uh, uh, the subtitle or whatever the caption for the graphic, what's in the graphic. Don't actually put in a a, a legend. I, I'm not really sure why he wanted that, but still, it is possible to remove the legend if you don't want it. Uh, so, uh, but still, it's nice that it's automatically in there. That's that's really nice." Uh, the unfortunate thing, of course, with what we've done up here is that we had to use that dollar sign notation, which often can get really unwieldy. Uh, if you want, though, you do have a data argument that you can set. So you can tell where the data set's coming from so you, that you can drop all that dollar sign crap. All right. Uh, so let's say that I want a different kind of plot. For example, I want a histogram of the pedal length. I can still use qplot. I'm going to say qplot pedal length uh, data equals iris. And then what I'm going to do is change the geom of the plot. So geoms are an idea that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, well, I'll talk about them a little bit more. I guess, well, okay, I guess I'll just talk about them right now. Geoms are the visual channel through which information is communicated. So in this case, I'm communicating information via a histogram. Histograms are very similar to density plots, so we'll also create a density plot while we're here. Oh, look at that. That's it's better than what it used to be. Uh, I can create a box plot for the pedal length. Unfortunately, this box plot isn't uh, uh, all that great because it's like honestly, box plots shine when they're be when they're comparative. So uh, let's instead have a, a comparative box plot. So this is a comparative box plot where uh, we have box plots for different species. Uh, so this is Q plot species pedal length. So species comes first because we want species to be tracked along the x-axis, and petal length comes second because we want petal length along the y-axis. You can switch these around. Let's go ahead and switch it and see what happens if we switch species and petal length. So petal length, uh, species. All right, now it's sideways, which, I don't know. It's, if, if you want us sideways, then you can make it sideways. It's, it's totally up to you. 
Uh, but, that, but for that one, we just said, okay, the Geom is now box plot. Okay, so ggplot2 allows graphics to be themed. Uh, that's that's actually a really handy feature. It's kind of cool. You can write a fun, you can write something representing your theme, and then you can try out different themes for your graphics. Uh, so, for example, right now the default theme is a uh, theme gray, uh, and theme gray is just this gray theme where you have a gray background, you have white lines for uh, for uh, tracking the uh the uh, the uh, coordinates of the of the plot this is a type of theme that a uh, 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 tufty recommended he says this is a uh, rather readable to have the background being s this somewhat off color uh, results in a more readable plot and some people think it looks good i'm actually not that much of a fan myself personally so i actually would like to change this theme to something else uh so there's actually in fact a package called gg themes and GG Themes, just all it does is it just comes with the. Let's make sure that I have it installed. Oh no 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 no! Don't don't do that. Uh uh. Okay. Hold on a second. I want to make sure that things are going okay. Okay, I just accidentally pressed a button that made me wonder if the audio might go off because I did have once a video where the audio just suddenly disappeared halfway through. And I have no idea to this day why that happened. So I pressed the wrong button and I'm just absolutely petrified that I'm about to lose all my audio. So I just had to restart. Anyway, um, we have this package, GG Themes. I installed it while I was working on that. And uh, it comes with themes. So if you want to make your graphic look like something that came from The Economist or something from The Wall Street Journal or 538 or Microsoft Excel, if you would ever want a plot that looks like that, uh, you, you, can, you can change how the plot looks. So, oh, another cool thing about ggplot is that it creates these uh, ggplot class objects that you can save. And how ggplot works is that when you want to view a plot you print it so here i just created an object p uh so class p uh gg and gg plot so this is a gg plot class object and if i print it then it plots or th that's the same thing as just p because when you type in the name of the thing what r does by default is prints it so the print met so the print function gets called on the thing so those two commands print p print p and just p are equivalent so, um, uh, well, if we want to try out other themes, what we do is we add the theme to the plot via the plus operator. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, isn't plus for addition? Well, yes. Thing though is, R allows you to overload operators. Operator overloading is where you redefine an operator such as plus to behave differently based off of, um, based off of its uh, off of what you've given it so in this case uh, plus works differently when the objects on the two on the two sides are gg objects like, like let's see class uh, theme bw that's a theme class object and also a gg class object so there's a p.gg so there is a version of the plus plus operator that's meant to work with gg objects so you can add these two things together and look at different themes for your plots. So here we we, we saw BW, we saw classic. Here's the dark theme. Uh, here's the minimal theme. Here's the void theme. Uh, let's see, uh, library uh, GG themes. What are some of the themes that come with GG themes? So we could try theme. Hmm, ooh, economist. Theme economist. So let's do P plus theme economist. Ooh, an economist looking plot. Uh, what's another one that we could do? We could try. Uh, these come with the GG themes package. So theme, uh, let's see, economist, economist white, Excel, uh, 538. Let's try 538. Oh, oops, I need to put the parentheses. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Uh, I, it, this isn't, by the way, 538 does use 
uh, ggplot for their graphics and they have their own internal theme. Like you could write a theme function yourself so that when you make your plots, you just add your own theme function uh, like like we were doing up here. And now you got your own theme that can that you, that if you're making good publications, you'll be known for. All right. So that's the qplot function. And also gives you some uh, basics of ggplot. Like, for example, this plus operator is actually used all over the place in ggplot. Like, if you, you can see it down here, the plus operator being used all the time. Uh, so, ggplot, the function ggplot. There's a function called ggplot. Uh, oh, that's three Gs. So, this is a function. Uh, oh, they use S3. Hmm. Uh, so this is the main function of ggplot2. qplot is basically just a trimmed down version of ggplot. ggplot is much more general, and it's also much more restrictive. Crap. Uh, hold on. Sorry, I had to interrupt the stream again because I pressed the wrong hotkey again, and uh, I was afraid that it might cause the audio to go out, so I had to restart. Anyway, uh, this ggplot is the most important plotting function uh, in a, in the ggplot2 package. It's the main function. qplot is basically a stripped-down version of ggplot, so ggplot has more restrictions. For starters ggplot only works with data frames the input to ggplot must be a data frame and in the book ggplot2 hadley wickham explains why why that must be the case and furthermore uh your data needs to be in what's known as long form format so uh, that that's not something i'm going i'm not going to go into in too much detail uh, I think I don't think I really talk about data reshaping and this uh, long form versus wide form format in the summer uh, lectures, uh, but but basically there's these uh, different types of data formats called long form and wide form, where basically you have uh, you have uh, your data points. How would I think about this? You have uh, like an identifier for your data points, uh, and you have uh, like a column for a value and a column for a variable for the data point. So you might have like an ID column identifying which data point uh, is being referred to. You have a column for a value, which is a value of a variable, and you have a column for a variable, which is identifying the variable for which the value is associated. Uh, so ggplot2 is expecting your data to be in this long form format. So uh, that's another thing. So luckily, Iris is in this is in an appropriate format for ggplot two uh, for the ggplot function. Uh, once you have your data in this format, though, that's you, you can do a lot of things with it, and that's why it's required that your data be in these in data frames in a particular format. So um, so here's the idea of uh, ggplot. There are important building blocks for building graphics. You have aesthetics, geoms, and stats. Aesthetics represent uh, the visual channels through which uh, variables are being communicated. Uh, the the uh, geoms represent how exactly those visual channels are drawn, and stats are basically like statistical summaries that you can add to a graphic. So uh, to make a graphic using ggplot, we start with like the ggplot function and we give it the data set or the data frame that contains all of the data that we're going to be plotting. Then we're going to add, uh, we're, so we're going to use aesthetics. We're going to say that pedal length will be expressed through the x visual channel, so the X position. Pedal width will be expressed through the Y channel. Uh, the species will be expressed through the shape channel, and the species will also be expressed through the color channel. And how exactly that will be translated into a graphic is via geom point. 
So G on point means that we're going to create basically a scatter plot. That X and Y position correspond to uh, that X and Y are going to be points at which a uh, at which a point is drawn, uh, are, are going to be the coordinates at which a point on a Cartesian plane is drawn, and uh, shape and color control what how ex the color and the shape respectively of that point. Um, so then we have additional things you can add, such as the X lab and the Y lab. So the X label and the Y label, and we can also give it a title. So we run this. Uh, and notice, by the way, that all these things are literally being added to the plot. So we start with a basic ggplot object, and then we add g on point and uh, the x label and the y label in the title. And we're also saving this thing as a uh, ggplot object p. So then when we print this object, this is the result. Now, one thing I actually don't like about this is I don't know why I decided to put we could have instead when doing this uh let's uh clear let's clear out everything inside this parenthesis so dean parenthesis yeah instead we could have put the aesthetics here and i actually think that's better so aes x equals uh pedal length uh y equals pedal width uh, shape equals species and color equals species. All right, so this looks equivalent. Uh, I just uh, kept the aesthetics with uh, ggplot instead. And you might be think thinking, what's the point of that? Well, now if we wanted to, we could switch out the geom to get a different looking plot. And I'm not suggesting that the plot that I'm about to make is going to really be any sense it's it's gonna probably be nonsense but we we can do this if we wanted to so we could do geom line yeah i mean the resulting plot is nonsense but the fact that we can change it and just switch out how exactly x and y get translated into a plot that's an important part of how ggplot2 works so we can try out different geoms. Like I wonder if uh, I wonder if there's what are other geoms that we could possibly try? Maybe area. I wonder what will happen if we try area instead. I'm just gonna do it, even though I I kind of doubt that it's going to work. But I just wonder what will happen. Oh, it's hideous! It's absolutely hideous. It does work though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, all right, so I'm really abusing the system, but it, it, it is a thing. So um, you, you're, you're allowed to do that. So, uh, so yeah, you're allowed to switch out. Like, how exactly things get translated uh, is, uh, is up to the, is, um, up to the uh, geoms. So let's go back to what we had before, because that actually was, that, that was actually a reasonable plot. And then we can add additional features to our plot. Like, for example, I'm going to add a density plot, a two-dimensional density plot, which is pretty cool. Uh, we get these uh, density regions describing how much our data, like, clusters and points. Uh, and it even accounts for the colors. Uh, so, although this is another reason why uh, we probably should have put AES with the GG plot function call because then we wouldn't have to uh, copy it again in stat density 2d so that's a little bit of a inefficiency on my part uh, here is another uh, plot so what is this one plotting uh, let's print Q oh it doesn't know what to do uh, we can try out uh, oh yeah that's right it doesn't know what to do because I actually haven't given it a geom yet to actually translate the uh, the aesthetics into an actual plot. So the aesthetics this time, uh, sepal length corresponds to the y to whatever y is. Species corresponds to whatever x is. Color is going to be species. And then I can start trying out different geoms uh, for uh, this graphic. So uh, I can try out a, a box plot geom to get a box plot, or a violin plot to get a, vi a, a violin geom for a violin plot. Uh, the jitter plot, where you 
these uh, points are just randomly moved around in the X direction, but their Y uh, position is preserved. This is actually somewhat similar. You can read this pretty similarly to how you understand a box plot. Uh, or the violin plot, where you also add the jitter, and you also add a statistical summary uh, for the range. Uh, I think this is like the first through third quartile, quartile or something. Uh, yeah, so it's including median and the first and third quartiles. This is a pretty expressive plot. You get to see both the you get to see this uh, violin plot describing the overall shape of the distribution and the density of the points around around it. You get to also have the points themselves so that the reader can see where the points actually fell. Like they don't actually care about the x position, but the y position is is meaningful, and they also get a statistical summary. All of that in one graphic and with a relatively simple uh, function call. Far simpler than whatever, you, like, this would be a nightmare to make in base R. Absolute nightmare. And I have no idea about it, Lattice, but in base R, this would be a huge nightmare to make. Uh, we can create uh, facet grids. So remember with the uh, Lattice and base R, we wanted to split up a plot based off of a um, some categorical variable. With the uh, ggplot2, what you're using are uh, facet grids. So in this case, I want, I said, basically, I want the, uh, the X position to, I want to split the plot based off of the, uh, species. And I'm going to do so in the X position. There's nothing in the Y coordinate because this creates a grid. I don't want it to split up based, uh, split the Y coordinate in any meaningful way. So I put a dot there. So I said dot model by species. Uh, if I wanted, to, and if, let's say that we wanted instead these things here, we have stacked left to right. If we want to do top to bottom, we could do species uh, model by dot and this would work as well uh, yeah so uh, this is a way for us to create multiple plots of the same thing and it's doing pretty similar to what lattice was doing uh, it, we can create like these four dimensional grids like for example here are histograms for uh, the price of cars in the cars 93 data set where we split up based off of the origin of the car and the drivetrain of the car. And origin is going to be the Y position because that comes before the tilde and drivetrain will be the X position because that comes after the tilde. And we end up with a grid. This is the reason why we had to have the dot up here because we were only splitting based off of one variable. We are allowed to be split based off of two variables as we do here. And we end up with an actual grid. So uh, that was a histogram. So I, I said, all right, make a histogram for this. Uh, we could instead try dot plots. We are allowed to make dot plots and we could do density plots as well. All right, so that's it for what I wanna say about uh, ggplot2. This is actually a pretty brief introduction to ggplot2 and ggplot2 is one of those packages that's well worth getting very familiar with. So I really would suggest that if you're going to be doing any sort of statistical work uh, with R, that you get familiar with this package and uh, learn how to use it well. All right, so that's it for uh, my lectures on uh, visualization and uh, uh, have a good day.